a good Erev Shabbos, all atheists, especially my atheist friends. This week's Torah portion is the portion that deals with Chukas. Chukas means the statute of the law, the statute of God's law. That is to say that there are commandments which we can't even begin to understand because there are a chukah, something that's engraved, something that has no basis in reason, because reason, you see, is in addition to God's will. God's pure will, God's pure essence, is beyond reason, because God is truly infinite. And you can only begin to relate to God, who is the original cause, who loves everything, and creates everything with wisdom, but is above wisdom and above love, God's essence can only be grasped by a service that is of the essence of the soul, which is to be completely devoted to God, irrespective of rationale and reason. For this reason we keep kosher. There's no reason for kosher. It's not to be healthier. You can be very, very healthy and have a non-kosher diet purpose of keeping kosher is to listen to God. The same thing is true with non-wearing of shatnas, wool and linen together, or the red heifer. The red heifer was slaughtered, burnt into ashes, mixed with living water from a well, with um, a cedar, staff, a hyssop, and some scarlet wool. And they were also burnt, and the ashes were then mixed with this water, living water from a well, and then was sprinkled on by means of hyssop branches upon people who had become contaminated by connection to the dead. This all does not make any sense at all. And then through the process, the people became permitted to enter the temple if they were sprinkled upon on the third day of separation and the seventh day of separation. And they proceeded on the eighth day of separation from the dead to go to a mikvah. They were then allowed, it was an eight-day process, they were then allowed to enter the temple area. However, the people who sprinkled onto the people who became purified, they themselves became ritually impure, had to go to mikvah ritual pool, and could only enter the temple in the after the evening or the next morning. Uh, this is something that doesn't make any sense. If it makes it other people purified, how does it bring impurity upon the person? So I'll tell you what I think. Even though this doesn't make sense, but this exists within the world. You see, the people who serve other people, doctors, psychiatrists, counselors, or people who serve the country as military uh, experts, uh, people who have to be involved in espionage, or defense projects, they live a very secretive lives and they are minutak, they are separated from the reality of the world. Nobody is allowed to know the kind of lives that they lead and therefore there is a disconnect. The same thing is true when a psychiatrist deals with the problems of other people, he has to disconnect himself or else he'll be emotionally too involved with his patients and possibly can get sick. And so when you deal with assisting others, you have to separate and distance yourself from the person. You have to create a facade of concern, and at the same time, when the time ends, you go about doing your business. It's called a disconnect with what you're doing, and you're involved in a different reality. And whenever you have a disconnect, the person needs to be healed, because to be disconnected is to be disingenuous. You're not real because if you are real, then you have to feel. If you don't feel, then you're not really appreciating what's going on. And so the person does feel for the time, but then disconnects. So the person really isn't involved with the patient, or the teacher's not involved with the student, or the, uh, the spy is not involved emotionally with the people that he deals with. 
for the sake of his job. Um, it's a disconnect. When you're disconnected with people, you need a cleansing. And that's what happens when you're involved with ritually uh, performing a purification for those who were unfortunately connected with things that were inappropriate or necessary but still not considered appropriate for the, for the temple. As a public servant, you become cynical. You become disattached. You don't really care. It's, they're, they're just numbers and like animals that you're just taking care of. And that's a disconnect with people that has to be corrected. And so those who engage in purifying and helping those who need to be purified need themselves to be purified because of their lack of real connection and real compassion. And this shows you just how deep the Torah goes into the psychology of a person, of a human being. As it says, the Torah actually penetrated into the ultimate will, the ultimate intellect of the person, and decided accordingly. And this is just one insight into the commandments of the Torah, which are exceedingly profound, my atheist friends. And were you to study the Torah with me, or with a real teacher, not me, somebody who's real, somebody like the Rebbe who passed away in Gimel Thomas 16 years ago, were you to study Torah with a real great Torah giant, you wouldn't be writing the things that you write to me all the time that are really inappropriate. Read the Torah with the commentaries. Ask questions. You can ask any question you want. But don't be disrespectful. And I'll be respectful of you. And we'll both need the ashes of the red heifer so that we don't get disconnected. Thank you.